when I look at Chicago and when I look at uh, inner city areas all across America, you look at our neighborhoods and they're the most impoverished. You look at our neighborhoods, the education levels are the worst. You look at our neighborhoods, the schools are the worst. You look at our neighborhoods, the violence is at an all time high. And you have to ask yourself, why are these things the way they are? I have a good old mother in heaven, my Lord. Anytime we talk about these issues with respect to the inner city, places like Chicago, the bad word is responsibility. This idea of the community needs to be responsible for the state of its condition. People don't like hearing that. Uh, immediately, it sets off a defense mechanism in a lot of people because it seemingly, it, it gets perceived as saying, I blame you for the state of the condition that you and your community are in. Um, I think we've, we've really got to get over that. Because we do have a responsibility, not just the people in the community, in these particular communities. Um, I think as a country as a whole, but more so for the people in these communities because they're the ones that are living there. And one of the biggest responsibilities that I think that needs to be had or taken on by the people in these communities are holding their representatives accountable. Pastor Brooks, so yeah. thanks for having me. It's appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Everything you know about Chicago comes by way of the mainstream media. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would be reluctant to come to Southside. Absolutely. Um, how accurate is that depiction? When I look at Chicago and when I look at uh, inner city areas all across America, most of them, if not all of them, are democratically ran. Here in Chicago specifically, where the Democrats have been in control and we've got a black caucus that is primarily democratic, but you look at our neighborhoods and they're the most impoverished. You look at our neighborhoods, the education levels are the worst. You look at our neighborhoods, the schools are the worst. You look at our neighborhoods, the violence is at an all time high. And you have to ask yourself, why are these things the way they are? The city's fame violence is all the result of gangs and Democrats. We fell in. The kinds of figures that compare with the world's active war zones. A whopping 677 through the end of March compared to 359 shootings this time last year. Someone is shot in this city almost every other hour, every other hour. what Chicago police have been bracing for. It's not a police issue, it's a society issue. These issues are policies that have been put in place over years that have driven people into these predicaments and situations. And until we open up our eyes and become more balanced and decide that we're not gonna be monolithic and just all think one way, uh, we're gonna continue to see this over and over and over again. When, whenever you're dealing with a culture uh, and, and, and you're dealing with people that this is all they've known, this is all they've seen, just naturally, yeah. you, come, you become numb to exactly, and, and it just becomes your norm. And so uh, even in this area, when, when you have a whole lot of violence that's going on. 14 people killed by gun violence this weekend. Two men shot at a crowd during a block party. All of a sudden, it just becomes, this is just something that we just deal with and we just accept it. You, you would have a kind of unique perspective from the standpoint that you didn't grow up here. Right. But now you're in the thick of it, right? right. So you kind of, I guess, a fresh set of eyes from, exactly. you know what I mean, in that regard. Um, what's, what's, the, like, what's the mentality of a lot of the younger, the younger kids in this area? Uh, a, a, a lot of them are, they deal with a lot of hopelessness, of course. They have a lack of expectation. And, and mainly that is because they're not exposed to a lot of things outside of their area. And so uh, 
most of the children in this area, and not just the kids, but just people in general. Yeah. Um, whenever you're not exposed to anything beyond what you've seen every day, you become numb and sort of complacent and and sort of accepting of the of the environment and the world around you. And that's pretty much what we're seeing here. Do you think there's an element in terms of like their initial reaction or using that as an excuse to avoid developing hope? Absolutely. Like there's a there's a comfort in the consistency of lack of hope. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And I wonder sometimes do they look at it and say, I don't want you to give me hope. Absolutely. Because I don't want to be let down later on. And it's not just that they want to, they don't want to be let down. Mm -hmm. One thing that I've learned is that hope requires work. And gotcha. so now that I, now that you put into my mind mm -hmm. that I can get a degree, I yeah. actually got to go to school and get it. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, now that you put into my mind that, that I can own my own business, mm -hmm. now I've got to go through the proper channels to get it done. And so hope, uh, uh, not just, uh, it, it, it puts a fear because now there's a work Mm -hmm. that is attached to the hope. Hopelessness. You have individuals who feel hopeless, who feel like they don't have any alternatives, any options, no other way. And so they take the easy way out. The bigger issues are the breakdown in the family, uh, lack of a moral compass, and the economy. Even though the rest of America is thriving, you go to the south sides and west sides of Chicago, and you'll see a high unemployment rate higher than anywhere else in the country. And I believe those things drive the violence more so. So what, if, if you're gonna pick one thing, right? One thing that you would say is the big, because me personally, I think it's multifaceted. Yeah. Uh, I think the issue is completely complex. Absolutely. But if you are gonna attack this at one level, what do you think would have the biggest impact? What do you think that problem is? Well, beside the fact that the churches need to do more, we got to come out of these four walls and, and get out into the streets and, and, and build relationships with the individuals who are that we call shooters. Until that happens, you're going to continue to see um, a lot of shootings in Chicago. Also, you know, we have to work on the family structure. I believe um, the breakdown of the family structure in our community, especially when you have over 75% of the households are single parent households, and that's really tough. And I think that drives a lot of the issues. You have a lot of fatherless uh, young boys growing up being very violent and angry. And I, so I think if the church and, and family structure could be worked on, uh, I'm, 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 I believe it could be um, helped a whole lot. From your perspective, what do you think is the reason for the degeneration of the family structure in, in, our, in our communities in that manner? Well, you got a lot of policies that have been put in place. Uh, I believe uh, a lot of those policies have been driven by Democrats over years and years and years. Uh, a lot of policies that have driven people into poverty in our neighborhoods. As a result, uh, you have a lot of individuals who have become uh, single parents uh, because sometimes it's benefited by the process and systems that have been put in place. And so I think that um, those generational problems, those democratic policies yeah. have helped to drive a lot of what we're experiencing in our neighborhood. Gotcha. And even, in, and you know, some people have the conspiratorial elements where they say, you know, this is done on purpose, you know, it, it, yin yang. Yeah. I think it's irrelevant, whether it's done on purpose or too. if it's just an indirect exactly. consequence, right? I say it's irrelevant yeah. as well. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we need to make some changes. changes. You know, God walked down in the cool of the day, he called Adam by his name, but he refused to answer, cause he was naked and ashamed. Mm -hmm. So we've got to do something different, something we've got to approach this from a different perspective. If you can't depend on somebody else to help fix your condition, then you've got to depend on yourself. You don't have a choice. We can continue to live on in a ceremonial sense of ideology, or we can step into reality and realize no one's coming to the rescue. It sounds morbid, but it's the truth. No one is coming to the rescue. Real quick before you go, I want to talk about the guide I put together titled, If I Could Carry Only One Gun. In this guide, I talk about which gun that would be and the reasons why. So be sure to click the link in this video to download your free copy today. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel.